I'm Kayla and this is At Home with Kayla Price. And I just shared with you a pumpkin pie, pumpkin and sweet potato pie actually, that I am making for Thanksgiving, which is tomorrow. So you would have seen me prep it and get it in the oven and it's cooking. So in a little bit, I will show you what it looks like when it comes out. But first I wanted to talk a little bit about having guests join us in our homes over the holiday season or any time of year, but we tend to probably have more friends and family stay with us during the holidays. So it seems like a good time to go over a refresher about some things to keep in mind when we are setting up our guest rooms or a space for our company. So first of all, I like to make sure, obviously you want your whole home to be clean, but in particular, you wanna make sure that if it's a guest room, you know, sometimes dust bunnies and spider webs might collect a little more than in high traffic areas of your home. So go ahead and give it a good deep cleaning as well as the bathroom. If it is an area that they're not gonna have to share the bathroom or even sometimes uh, guest bedrooms or also home offices or playrooms or something like that, if it's not one of those combo bathrooms or combo bedrooms, then it's gonna make it a lot easier for you and your guests probably because they'll have a space where it, it's more like a hotel room where it feels like there's space, people aren't gonna be coming in, they don't have to worry about, you know, someone sneaking in while they're sleeping in because they've gotta get a document out for work. So just keep those things in mind. If you can avoid some of that combo shared space, that will be nice, but sometimes it's not an option. So uh, usually our friends and family understand that before they come over. And if they want that private space, obviously they can get a hotel room, I would imagine. But assuming that you have had a conversation with your guests, just to make them aware if they haven't already been to your home, what to expect. Now, some of us may have our, you know, kids coming home or kids coming home with a significant other for the first time. So obviously our child is gonna feel at home, but we wanna make sure we do extra to make their person, their friend, feel extra special as well. So keep in mind things that will make that person feel special. Maybe if they could have some space to themselves so that they, you know, don't feel overwhelmed in a new family, in a new home, but also just inviting them, you know, come sit with us, come out back with us, make sure they understand the invitations there because as time goes on, they'll understand. They can go and do and participate, but when they're still new to meeting your family or being a part of the family, it's nice to extend that welcome until they get to the point where they definitely feel like they're a part of the family and have all the um, free reign that they want to have. So specifically, I'm gonna put in a clip I just took of the bedroom area and bathroom that I prepared for um, our youngest son who uh, right now should have just landed and hopefully my husband and other son are on their way home. I like to have a place for guests to be able to put their luggage. This is an old cedar chest and I made a cover for it that's padded on top so it won't hurt the furniture. I like to make sure there is an extra blanket if they get cold and plenty of pillows on the bed in case they want to read or set up or cuddle with a pillow. I also, because I don't have glass on top of uh, this piece of furniture, which was my grandmother's old sewing cabinet, uh, I have a place where they can put a drink without ruining the finish any more than it already has aged, but then also a place that they can plug in both a USB port or just a regular old plug. And then of course it's nice and convenient if you have a lamp on the bedside because then they're not having to walk to get to the bed. But of course some of that's just dependent on your bed setup. And in the bathroom, I like to leave out some clean towels, plenty of space if they need to put 
products out or a dot kit. Obviously some tissues if they need that sort of thing. Some seasonal soap. <clears throat> and a shower that obviously this one has some products they can use if they didn't bring their own. Have a place to hang their clothes or a robe and just plenty of room to work around. So as you can see, it's nothing fancy that I did. It's just making sure that there are different kinds of pillows. Some people like soft pillows, some people like firm pillows, some people like to hug a pillow. If they're flying in, then that um, may not be something they could have actually brought with them. So providing them some of those different sorts of things. Now, I do happen to know that our sons tend to sleep on top of the bed, not under the cover. So I wasn't really that worried about the extra layers, but I did leave them there just in case he did want that sort of thing. I do know that the boys like to open up their suitcase and just spend their vacation using their suitcase instead of hanging things up. However, it's always good to have some hanging space in a closet or to have some drawers that they can put things away in or even in the bathroom, have some empty drawers where they can put their makeup or hairbrushes or whatever. Make sure there's some space on the countertop if that is possible. Sometimes that is not possible. But those are just some things to keep in mind. I do like to set out a like towel and washcloth set so that even the boys just don't feel like they have to go digging around in the closets to find what they need. It's just out and they can use it and they're not having to, you know, ask me, chase me down. Same thing with hair dryers or things that you would use in the shower, shampoos and soap. I just like to have that sort of thing already out so that it's convenient and nobody's having to search or dig or wonder what they can use or could use or should use. So anything you can do in advance is helpful. Now, uh, I like to also leave a bottle of water or a decanter of water with a glass in the bathrooms for guests so that if they take medicine or just like to take you know, water first thing in the morning or get thirsty in the middle of the night, it'll be convenient. They're not having to traipse to the kitchen and find a glass and find out where the cold water is kept or whatever it may be. So little things like that are nice. Um, obviously, when they first come to your house, if you would have uh, some drinks available for them because they've probably just flown in or driven in, some kind of a journey and they might be um, a little thirsty. Obviously, they might want to settle in, go to the restroom, get comfortable, put their things away. It's all gonna depend on their personality and if it's somebody you know well, you probably are gonna know exactly what they want to do and if they're real comfortable with you, then they're gonna know that they can do whatever they want and it's not gonna bother you. But some things I do like to help my guests along with, especially my sons. Um, I have a lot of antiques and you know, sometimes other folks aren't used to antiques or young folks don't know. So I either try to make sure I put glass on top of all my wooden furniture or I put lots and lots. If you've watched me before, you know I love coasters. Um, are these. Uh, I get them on Amazon and they're those, these are the same. It's just these, you can probably tell, haven't worn as well over time. It's looking awfully blue in here. Uh, whereas these, because of the pattern, make it real easy to hide. But these are those absorbent, like sandstone or ceramic um, coasters. I have a thing about that, as you know, because there are millions of lovely coasters out there, but unless they actually absorb lots of water, they're just a pretty piece of something. They, they're not really gonna protect anything, if you know what I mean. And it's always good if they have cork on the back because that helps protect your furniture as well. So I provide lots of coasters so that people aren't having to set any glasses or soda cans on wood furniture. The other thing is I hate going to a hotel 
uh, and having to dig for a plug. So I like to make it real convenient. And in the clip I showed you, you saw I try to, by the side of every bed, have something where a person can plug in their USBs or a regular old plug so they're not actually having to lift furniture to get under, you know, behind, whatever it may be. It's just easy, breezy, right there, and convenient. And if I was too worried about it being an eyesore, what I did in my bedroom, uh, or on my side of the bed in the bedroom, is I put my little thingy majigger uh, Velcroed on the back of my uh, nightstand so that it can't even be seen. So there are lots of things you can do like that. If you do that in your guest room, be sure and show your guest on Velcro and set it on top so that they'll know that's that it's there and for them to use. Anything you can do to think through might they, what they might want or need, that is so very helpful and makes them feel more comfortable and they're not having to hunt you down or you're not having to stop what you're doing to answer questions and help a person. The other thing that's also really nice for guests is if you have some ideas in your head of things that they might want to do while they're there, either with you or independently, as long as you know what's available and what times they're open and tickets, that's just something that real easily if somebody says, oh, let's go out to eat tonight or you know, I'd, I'd love to see a local museum or go to a movie. You kind of already have a game plan if so. Now, chances are you would have already spoken with your guests and said, what do you want to do? Do you want to relax, hang out at the house, go places, shop, see the town? If you had a chance to do that, then you've probably already got a plan. But otherwise, just have some things in case something falls through or, you know, sometimes, you were gonna do one thing and then the weather is bad, so maybe you could stay home and watch a movie on Netflix or something like that. If you happen to know favorite snacks, favorite drinks, accumulate some of that and have it handy for them. Think about some of the best hotels or bed and breakfasts where you've stayed where they had a little area so somebody could make their own coffee or grab an extra drink or eat a cookie in the middle of the night and not be disturbing anybody. Those are just great things that obviously if it works well at hotels and bed and breakfast, it would go over well at your home as well. And lastly, if you know your guest is not allergic to flowers, it sure is nice to have uh, fresh flowers in their room or in their bathroom. If they are allergic, a green plant still brings some life in, so that would be something you could add to that area just to enliven it a little bit and again, make it feel more warm and welcoming. I hope those tips have helped you and that you have a wonderful holiday season with lots of friends and family that you get to spend time with. I will be back next weekend with another new video. Until then, have a great week. Bye-bye.